Today I'm going to talk about seizures and stress, what it means, and how to block the connection. Many people believe that stress is one of the most common triggers for seizures, and I'm going to talk to you about what we understand about it now and a special study that we're doing to try to understand it even better. So stress is a common seizure precipitant. Most people with epilepsy will always wonder why did that seizure happen when it did. They try to come up with a reason why the seizure happened at the time it did. And stress is the most commonly reported precipitant by people with epilepsy. And in six different studies, up to two-thirds of people thought that stress was the most common precipitant that they experienced with their seizures. This is a diagram that I've used to try to explain why stress doesn't always trigger a seizure or why some things that can be seizure triggers don't always trigger one. So if you look here, this line is the seizure threshold line. The blue line is the seizure tendency line. So when things that increase the likelihood of seizures happen, that blue line gets up closer to the black line. So for example, if somebody with seizures has, drinks excessive alcohol, their tendency may go up, but if they don't drink enough, they may not have a seizure if it doesn't hit that black line. But in this situation, if there's a lot of stress, if they drank alcohol, maybe even missed a medication, and the blue line gets up this, this high, then a seizure might happen. This complicates our understanding and our study of stress because not every stressful event will trigger a seizure, and the same stressful event that happens two or three different times may only trigger a seizure one time and not the other two times. We did a survey in our clinic about stress and seizures and found some very interesting results. We asked people, have you ever tried stress reduction to help your seizures? And we were surprised that more than half of the people in the clinic had tried stress reduction. And then we said, when you tried stress reduction, do you think it helped reduce the frequency of your seizures? And a full 87% said, yes, stress reduction helped reduce my seizures. This was surprising because if you ask epilepsy specialists to take care of patients, they would say, well, we don't know if stress reduction has any effect at all. But if you ask patients, 88% of the people who tried said stress reduction helped their seizures. We're now doing a, a very um, innovative study looking at stress reduction and seizures. The goal is to reduce seizures by blocking stress. And how we're going to use stress reduction using a non-medication approach. We combine various groups with either muscle relaxation, diaphragmatic breathing, which is sort of deep, slow breathing that helps you relax, or focused attention practice and they do that twice a day. At the same time, we monitor various stress and mood variables where they fill information in on the phone about how stressed or not stressed they feel. And I'll explain to you a little bit more detail in a minute. But they do that twice a day throughout the study. So then we can correlate whether high stress is a seizure trigger and whether stress reduction helps reduce the seizures. So here's what the screen on the smartphone looks like. For example, in this question, we asked which of these best describes how you feel right now. And you, on this end, it says relaxed. And on the other end, it says stressed. And you put your finger on the screen and move that little cursor either more toward the stressed part or more toward the relaxed part, just like that. And this one has a slightly different question. This one says, which best describes how you feel now, pleasant or unpleasant. But you put your finger on the phone and it goes from zero to 100. So you can put each day very quickly, twice a day, exactly how you feel in that moment. The study now is ongoing at three different centers, the University of Cincinnati, Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York, and University of California, San Francisco. If you're in any of these regions and you're interested in participating in the study, you can contact the study team there. That's on this screen. Or you can look it up on our website at ucepilepsycenter.com, the SMILE study. This study is also available if you can want to go to clinicaltrials.gov, which is a 
um, a repository of lots of different clinical trials and look at stress and seizures and you can find the study there. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope this helps you understand a little bit about stress and seizures and if you're interested in the study please feel free to contact us. We are actively recruiting patients and subjects right now for the study. Thank you.